you just finished a Zoom call. So you stand from your desk, open your door, and think of your brother. So you walk on over and greet him with a sick handshake. Now, consider something as dramatic as a worldwide pandemic, a handemic. You've just lost your right hand. Whether it was caused by a car accident, vascular disease, or because of deformity, your life has completely changed. So you ask your doctor for a prosthetic, and you're given a hook. You can open a door, but you can't shake your brother's hand. You're unsatisfied, so you look for something better. The next best thing that you find is a hand that moves to your control. You can open a door, and you're semi-confident you can shake a hand. So you walk over to your brother and start the usual handshake, but now you're more focused on controlling your new hand than actually greeting your brother. You try to gauge out a firm grip, but you overshoot and hurt him. The entire experience was not what you hoped for. Even though you could move your hand, you couldn't sense what you were doing. In fact, if you hadn't been watching yourself, you couldn't have guaranteed you were touching your brother at all. You are missing your sense of touch, the ability to discern your hand's position in space and its contact with the environment. Nerves are like wires. They conduct electrical signals between the brain and body. Nerves that control the hand extend from brain to spine to arm to hand. The typical hand contains nerve endings called receptors. There are two types of receptors, muscle receptors and sensory receptors. Muscle receptors take signals and translate electricity into muscle movement. On the other hand, sensory receptors take touch and translate it into electricity. This signal will be sent to the brain, creating feeling. If a prosthetic is going to have movement and feeling, then it must have some version of muscle and sensory receptor. Pieces of metal called electrodes are attached to nerves in the arm. These electrodes are connected to wires that lead to a portable computer carried by the amputee. The computer then uses a decode to transform the electrical signal into prosthetic hand movement. How natural a hand movement is depends on how well the electrode bridges the gap between arm nerve and computer. Another factor that affects the quality of movement is the amputee's sense of touch. Think about it. If you couldn't sense what your hand is touching, how would you know how to move it? First, the prosthetic must produce a natural electrical signal. To understand how, imagine you have a real hand again, and you just touched your brother's hand. Sensory receptors translate the force of your brother's hand into electrical signals to be sent to the brain. A prosthetic hand will instead have pressure and contact sensors that tell a computer how hard, how long, and where force is being experienced. The computer then encodes the force for some pattern of electrical signals. The signals travel through the wires to electrode to arm nerve to brain, where touch on your prosthetic hand can be felt by your phantom hand. Pretty cool, right? Prosthetic hands following this biomimetic approach are still in the research phase, but they might eventually become commercially available. The goal is to give you a hand. A moving, feeling, prosthetic hand.